Good morning, everyone. Today is March 20th. Um, it is the beginning of week five of Lent. I am Chris. I am here to read to you a, uh, an excerpt from A.W. Tozer's From the Grave, the Day 23 devotional, uh, specifically meant for Lent by the people who put all of these things together. Uh, these are a compilation of A.W. Tozer's uh, messages and preachings. They've taken 40 different excerpts out uh, and put them together for us in a nice, compact devotional for Lent. So, if you don't have From the Grave, I do suggest getting it. It is a good book, um, and it's worth it. And there is a lot of uh, hard-hitting truths in this. Things you don't necessarily want to read all the time because they're pretty convicting, but uh, it's good stuff. So, um... Uh, today, too, uh, if you could pray for me, I am starting my first day at a place called B&D, which is a medical supply company I'll be working at for, for a while. Uh, so, prayers will be good. I'm doing my orientation today, so we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. God is good. Uh, so, day 23. No saviorhood without lordship. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Isaiah 43, 3. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 2, 20. Mankind appears to have a positive genius for twisting truth until it ceases to be truth and becomes downright falsehood. By overemphasizing in one place and underemphasizing in another, the whole pattern of truth may be so altered that a completely false view results without our being aware of it. This fact was brought forcibly to mind recently by hearing again the discredited doctrine of a divided Christ so widely accepted in many religious circles. It goes like this. Christ is both Savior and Lord. A sinner, can, a sinner may be saved by accepting him as Savior without yielding to him as Lord. The practical outworking of this doctrine is that the evangelist presents and the seeker accepts a divided Christ. We have all heard the tearful plea made to persons already saved to accept Christ as Lord and thus enter into the victorious life. Almost all deeper life teaching is based upon this fallacy, but because it contains a germ of truth, its soundness is not questioned. Anyway, it is extremely simple and quite popular, and in addition to these selling points, it is also ready-made for both speaker and hearer and requires no thinking by either. So sermons embodying this heresy are freely preached. Books are written and songs composed all saying the same thing and all saying the wrong thing, except, as I have said, for a feeble germ of truth lying inert at the bottom. Now it seems odd that none of these teachers ever noticed that the only true object of saving faith is none other than Christ himself, not the saviorhood of Christ, nor the lordship of Christ, but Christ himself. God does not offer salvation to the one who will believe on one of the offices of Christ, nor is an office of Christ ever presented as an object of faith. Neither are we exhorted to believe on the atonement, nor on the cross, nor on the priesthood of the Savior. All of these are embodied in the person of Christ, but they are never separated, nor is one ever isolated from the rest." Much less, we are per much less are we permitted to accept one of Christ's offices and reject another. The notion that we are so permitted is a modern-day heresy. I repeat, and like every heresy, it has, had, it has had evil consequences among Christians. No heresy is ever entertained with impunity. We pay in practical failure for our theoretical errors. It is altogether doubtful whether any man can be saved who comes to Christ for his help, but with no intention of, to obey him. Christ's saviorhood is forever united to his lordship. Look at the scriptures. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 12 through 13. 
There the Lord is the object of faith for salvation, and when the Philippian jailer asked the way to be saved, Paul replied, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 He did not tell him to believe on the Savior with the thought that he could later take up the matter of his lordship and settle it at his own convenience. To Paul there could be no division of offices. Christ must be Lord, or he will not be Savior. There is no intention here to teach that the earnest believer may not go on to explore ever-increasing meanings in Christ, nor do we hold that our first saving contact with Christ brings perfect knowledge of all he is to us. The contrary is true. Ages upon ages will hardly be long enough to allow us to experience all the riches of his grace. As we discover new meanings in his titles and make them ours, we will grow in the knowledge of our Lord and in personal appreciation of the multifold offices he fills and the many forms of love he wears exalted on his throne. That is the truth, which has been twisted out of shape and reduced to impotence by the doctrine that we can believe on his saviorhood while rejecting his lordship. A.W. Tozer telling it as it is. We can't have one without the other. We can't pick and choose what we like about Jesus. Uh, we either take it all or we don't take it at all. So let's pray that God will direct us in these days. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, again, uh, please leave a, a note and I will pray for you. If you don't want it publicly known, that's fine. You can privately leave a message and I will keep it private. If you don't mind other people knowing, then we can pray for it uh, as we pray on, on this. So uh, let's pray. Lord, we uh, lift you up this morning, or we lift ourselves up to you this morning. You are exalted in our eyes, Father God, and we pray that you would continue to be magnified and exalted. Father God, you are Lord, Savior, Friend, Father. Uh, Jesus is, is our Lord as well. He is our Savior. And he, uh, he paid the price for our sins, and we are so grateful, Father. We praise you for that sacrifice. We thank you for everything that he's done, Lord. Help us to remember to treat Jesus as our Savior and our Lord and everything else that he is. Sometimes it's hard to remember all the different offices he fills, but as long as we remember who's in charge, we are not in charge. Father God, we do pray that you would help us to bow down to that truth. Thank you. In your holy name, amen. <sighs> Have a great day. Enjoy yours. I will enjoy mine. And I'll see you tomorrow on day 24, March 21st, which will be technically the first day of spring. But as was pointed out to me earlier, uh, the equinox actually landed on the 17th this year because it was the exact uh, sun rose at 7.03, I believe, and the sun set at 7.03, so it was a perfect 12-hour uh, day of sunlight. But I don't know how all those things work. All I know is that today is tech or tomorrow is technically the first day of spring. But have a good day. <laughs>